Hi, this is Diane Dietrich, and this is um, my latest SketchUp Quick Tip. Today I'm going to talk about using groups as templates. So you're probably familiar with using groups just to um, bind geometry together, to create it as a separate entity so you can move it, rotate it, do separate things with it. But there's also an interesting use of using groups as a template for other things um, in your model. And let's see how that works. So this simple room that I have started to create has got like the slope ceiling. It's going to have a row of clear story windows up here. And I know from my plans in front of me that in this space there's going to be two windows that are going to be um, four feet from the ground. And again, I'm using my tape measure. I just hit T for tape measure, clicking on the edge, dragging over one foot. Over here, I'm going to drag over also one foot. And you notice it kind of snaps to whatever length you've entered last. I'm going to pull down from this line and I want it to turn magenta so that I know that it's parallel to this line. Uh, sometimes if you rotate a little bit if you can't get that to happen, but you see now that my tape line I'm getting this magenta arrow and it's also telling me that the line that I'm drawing from is also turning magenta. So, and once I've got that to happen, I'm going to click one foot again. I know this tape is, this window is over six feet, so I'm going to use my tape measure. And then I know there's six inches between the two spaces. And these are basically the sizes of my two windows. And then I'm just going to use my line tool and look for that intersection snap and just trace the tape lines that I've made or the construction lines. And here are my two windows. Now there is a matching pair of windows over here. I could do that whole set of uh, laying out guidelines over here, but I can also just use these as a template and quickly copy those over to the other side. So let's say how I do that. First of all, uh, I could also erase these one by one with my erase tool, but you can also go to edit, delete guides, and they are all gone at once. I'm going to select this window. I'm going to hold down shift and select the second window. I'm going to right click and say make those a group. And then I'm actually going to just copy those windows over to this adjacent side. So I'm going to hit M for move, control for copy. And you can see that it's doing some weird things. And because it was made against this wall, the shape wants to remain glued to that wall. So to get it to not stick to that wall or anytime you're trying to do something and it seems to be sticking to the wall, I'm going to right click and pick unglue. Then I've still got this group selected. Again, I'm going to hit M for move, control to make a copy of that. I'm going to move it across in, in the green direction. I can hold down shift to lock it into that axis until it snaps to the opposite side. And I can see, it, see it's exactly in the right place because as I move it around, I can see the material is some, doing something called Z flashing. That means that the groups of the windows and the wall behind it are occupying the exact same plane, which for us is telling us a good thing. So I'm going to now right click on my window group and explode it. And then I can simply select the window, hit P for push pull, push again to that back edge. I can double click on this window. It's going to push it back the same amount. Same thing, I'm going over to this side, which is still grouped. So if you try to push it back and weird things start happening, I'm just going to do Control Z to undo that. It just means that you've forgotten to ungroup the windows first. So again, select it, right click, and say Explode, which is the same as ungroup. And I can hit P for push pull and select this. Whoops, somehow it didn't explode. P for push-pull, push it to the back edge, double-click again. Sometimes it seems like you've pushed things to the back edge and it hasn't deleted. Um, little glitch, I'll just go around to the back side and make sure that I have the outline, hit delete. And now I quickly have these two sets of matching windows. So on this back wall, I know I have four clear story windows that are five feet by four feet. So I'm just going to make my first window anywhere and I'm going to just click a rectangle, type in 5 feet, comma, 4 feet, hit enter, and I'm going to click on that and make it a group. And then I'm going to make a tape line that is 1 foot over from this edge. 
and I know that it's also one foot from the top edge, so I'm going to measure down in the blue direction. I'm going to take this group, and you can see I can just move it over there. It should snap to that intersection. And to make a copy of four of these, I know that the next window is one foot over, so I'm going to pull over one foot. I'm going to take this first uh, group. I'm going to hit M plus Control, again, which makes copies. I'm going to click and slide over from this upper left edge until I snap on the intersection. And here's a cool array trick if you haven't used that before. I actually know that I need three copies of this for total. So I've clicked and then I'm going to click times three or X three and hit enter and I have all four of my windows. Again, let's go over that sequence together because I know it can be a little tricky. So I'm picking the group, M for move, control or option if you're on a Mac to make copies. I'm going to click on this upper left hand endpoint. I'm going to drag it to the right. Click again when I hit intersection. And before I click anything else, I'm going to click times 3 or X3 and hit enter. And I have my four clear story windows. Then I can pick all of them. Again, I'm picking one, holding down shift, picking all of them. And then I can explode them all in one big swoop. I'm going to take the first one. And unfortunately, I can't push-pull them all at once. I have to do that one at a time. But again, if I push the first one back, the shortcut is just double-click on the other three windows. And I'm going to take my uh, eraser and quickly get rid of my tape lines. And now I've quickly laid out um, the clear story windows um, and the matching end windows. Here's another use for using a group as a template. So I've completed a lot of this house. I still have the original floor plan here that I've traced and it's hand drawn, so it's uh, not exactly uh, perfectly accurate. Um, so I'm going to create a group out of this island shape and then move that out, build the island out here, because I don't want to actually build it right from the floor, and then I can move it back in. So here's a couple tricks also about just creating a shape like this. So I'm going to start by hitting my L for line. I'm going to draw this first edge, but I'm actually going to come down and draw it parallel to the bottom face. And then I'm actually just going to take my rectangle tool. And that just helps make sure that all the lines are perpendicular. I'm going to click to that. Then I'm going to take my tape tool, and I'm going to pull from this edge. And I'm going to make sure that I stay in the green axes. And again, this is just because these lines aren't exactly square and perpendicular because they're hand-drawn, so if I do it this way, I know that all my lines are going to be um, parallel, perpendicular to each other when I need them to be. Now to draw these diagonal lines, I'm going to use my protractor tool, which is over here, it looks like a protractor. I'm going to click on the endpoint, and this seems a little odd, but I'm actually going to click along the line that I'm referencing, so I have this line of rotation, and then I can drag up, you see I have a construction line coming up with my cursor, and it's going to kind of snap to 45 degrees. If I look down in my value control box, I can see also that it tells me 45 degrees there and click the third time. And then I'm going to need to draw this angle, so I'm going to come back over. Um, I still have the protractor chosen by default. Again, I'm going to click once, twice, and drag down until I get that 45 degree snap and click again. So I could use my protractor tool to measure all these angles, but I can also... Um, Remember that if I draw from any line, including a construction line, and pull out from there, the second line is always going to be parallel to that first line. So I'm just going to reference this first diagonal line that I made, pull out and snap here. Same thing, I'm going to pull out and snap to this line, and I'm going to start with this dotted line, pull out and snap. And I'm actually not snapping, I'm just referencing the line that is there. And then I can come back with my line tool and just kind of connect the dots to create this kind of funky island shape. And then I'm going to come back with my eraser and just get rid of all the extra lines that I don't need, including these interior lines. And now you can see if I double click on this, I can make that a group. And then I can take that shape and move it off to the side, explode it, 
and then start building this island from here. So here's the island that I've built from that original template. So then I can easily just take that and move it into place. And here's that same kitchen with a few more details added. So I uh, hope that was helpful and you can use this quick tip in your next project. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. For more instructional videos, please go to YouTube, search for Diane Dietrich, or for info about person and online classes, go to c3d.com.